everybody, it's Miss Leslie here from Selena's Public Library, and it is time for this month's preschool kit to go. The theme of this kit is bugs and insects, the creepy crawlies. And in here you will find some papers and some toys and things that you can use for learning activities with your littles. So come along and watch this video with me and I will show you all sorts of ways that you can play and learn along with your littles and help them get ready for kindergarten. Let's take a look at what's inside the kit this month. You will have four papers, two that are on regular paper and two that are on heavier cardstock. You will have 10 plastic butterflies of different colors. You will have 10 wide green popsicle sticks. You'll have two or three or maybe four of these large boar straws. Some teeny tiny little bees and ladybugs. One lace one small ink pad, and one pair of bug tongs. For the first page, we are going to need your stamp pad and a Q-tip. If you don't have a Q-tip, you could use the eraser end of a pencil, or you could just use fingerprints again. We are going to do a counting activity here by adding little body segments to the caterpillar. So we have a number to the left, and that's the number of fingerprints that we would ask your little one to add so that the caterpillar will grow longer. All right, so there we go, one. You're just gonna put one fingerprint. For two, they get to count them as they do it. One, two, and of course go on and on and on until you have a really long caterpillar. If you have the book at home or if you could find it on YouTube, it'd be a good time to read The Very Hungry Caterpillar. For the bottom segment here, we can do smaller dots for the ladybug, and this time rather than using a finger, we will use a Q-tip. So you could just put those dots in there. Um, this is less messy, but <laughs> it's also a good grip practice because you have to use that pincher grip to hold on to the Q-tip. And for this one, there's also the opportunity to do as many dots as you want, to then count them, and then to write the number that matches it. So here, once, they, once your little one does the dots, count them, one, two, three, and then you could write the number three in that square. With the same items, the stamp pad and the Q-tip and the back of your paper, you can make the shapes of various letters by doing fingerprints. So let's say we wanna start off with, well, I'll start with L because my name starts with an L. So let's make the shape of an L using just our fingerprints. L, 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 L Leslie, Lucky, L, Ladybug, L. And then you would trace the letter again. And again, make sure that you always give the sound along with the letter name. Now, if the fingerprint is too messy, you can do the same thing using your Q-tip and just make whatever letter you wanna do here. You could actually, uh, as the parent, you could write the, a letter quite large and then have your child follow the lines that you've created so that not only are they doing the dotting motion, but they're also getting the practice of following the lines. For the next activity, we will be using the straws and cutting them. Now I've already cut a few. I've got my orange straws and cut them into some longer lengths. Uh, this is another good cutting practice. It's not just paper that you can practice cutting on. You can practice on Play-Doh, on the Floam that we had one week, on straws, anything that will give the practice of that motion and building the strength in the hand. So uh, the funny thing is that these go flying when you cut them. So, <laughs> so beware, you're probably gonna go on a little chase while you do that. So just go ahead and cut them in a variety of lengths and then we'll see what we're gonna do with them. Once your straws are all cut, you could go ahead and do a few different things with them. You could sort them by color, blue, red, red, orange, and so on. You could make a visual graph 
a bar graph to see which one you have more of and which one you have less of. You can do a comparison of size. This one is the small one. This one is longer, short, long. How about this one? Hmm, it's taller than the red one, but shorter than the orange one. Now we have short, medium, tall, or short, medium, long. So just go ahead and practice with those. Do some comparison, do some sorting. You could even use these to work on our patterning that we've done before. We could do an AB pattern, blue, red, blue, red, blue, red, blue. What comes next? And you could do this with just, uh, just that way, or you can add the motions. We've talked about that, that helps to drive home the idea of the pattern if you have a physical motion to go with the objects that you are patterning. So maybe our blue, we're going to clap our hands. On our red, we're going to say, woo! Clap, woo! Clap, woo! Clap. What comes next? Woo! Using your cut up straws and the lace, we can do some fine motor practice by lacing the straw bits, almost as if they're beads. Um, go ahead and when they get the first one on, if you want to avoid frustration, tie that one at the bottom. Just go ahead and tie a little knot around it and then you will not have problems with the other ones falling off. So there we go. Now you could just go ahead and lace. And again, you could work on a pattern here or you can just lace for the fun of it. It looks easy for us adults, but there's a lot of things here. You've got to pinch the straw to pick it up. You've got to hold it in a way to make the holes accessible. You've got to pinch the eyelet of the lace and then you've got to push it in there. And the longer the straw piece is, the more difficult that will be. If you have a shorter straw piece, then it's gonna be easier because you don't have to push and hold it to get it to the end it's gonna be right there to grab. I'll just show you that again. If the, lip, if the straw is longer, you don't have the end of the little eyelet peeking out, so you really have to push, 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 and there you go. So there's a way to practice some lacing and some fine motor skills. If you can find a small piece of cardboard at home, we can also put the straw pieces onto here to change the lacing exercise from being up in the air to down on something a little more solid. So, all you need to do is find some tape and go ahead and tape some little straw pieces on. You could make it like a maze. You could make it the shape of a letter. You could make it a zigzag, however you want to. And what I've done here, just to speed things up, is I've put a strip of tape across. If you do this for your little one, then they can pick it up and decide where to put it. You could also make this into like a spider web shape and then use the lace to finish the spider web. And then maybe you could fly your butterfly or your ladybugs right into that web, see if they get caught. So once you have your straws arranged the way you would like them, just get your lace out again and now you could work on lacing. Now because this is down and the child doesn't have to hold it, it's a little bit easier when, particularly when you are going through those longer ones because it's not going to slip out. You can hold it and then push it again. So there you go. Make yourself a spider web or a maze or whatever you would like to do as you practice those fine motor skills. All right, let's take out our little teeny tiny bugs. We have some ladybugs and some bumblebees. Make sure with any of these things, any of these activities, that you talk as much as you can. Do some turn taking. You talk, your child talks, you talk, your child talks. Get some back and forth of conversation going and really add opportunity for increasing the vocabulary of your child. So we can talk about how ladybugs crawl, how they have wings as well as crawling, how bees have wings, they have stingers, they make honey. Just talk about all of these things as you are playing. Now, these are, as I said, very small, so be careful that your younger ones uh, don't get near these. So what we can do here is just work the pincer grab and simply pick them up. 
we could do a sorting exercise first off. I'll bring back my other bowl from the straws and simply picking them up and sorting them by type. This is going to be a challenge for little hands that haven't developed those skills. So really let them play with it. It might get a little bit frustrating, but that's an opportunity to talk about how, you know, some things are hard right now, but it doesn't mean you can't do them. It just means that you can't do it yet. You're growing, you're getting stronger, your body can do more things. You will be able to do it soon. You might not be able to do it yet, but just keep practicing. And there we go. Our little buggies are all sorted into their types. All right, let's do a little bit of math with our ladybugs. We could put the ladybugs in a couple of different piles where they have definitely different numbers within each pile and ask your child without counting if they can identify how many ladybugs are here. And actually, if you want, let's see, we could trap them. How many ladybugs did I trap in this pile? Whoop, just one. How about this pile? I'm gonna trap them. Whoop. How many ladybugs are in there? And this is working on that skill of subitization, which is recognizing how many of a thing are in a set without actually counting the one-to-one. -one. So you might be able to do it that way. You can also do the opposite, which is telling them how many the number is and having them find the right set. So can you trap the set of ladybugs that has two? Boom. Got them. Can you trap the set of ladybugs that has four? Whoop, got them. Now let's look at that set of ladybugs that we have that we've already identified as being four. Let's go ahead and take one away and hide it. How many ladybugs do you see now? One, two, three, three. Okay, that ladybug's gonna go back in the group. And now, I'm going to hide two. How many are left? One, two, two are left. Okay, the other ladybugs are gonna come back. All right, now I'm going to hide three. How many ladybugs are left? One. All right, these ladybugs are coming back to the group and now I'm going to hide Four. Whoop. How many ladybugs are left now? Zero. We can't see any. They were all hiding. Now we're going to take the same idea of that game, but instead of asking how many are left, we are going to ask how many did we take away? So let them see that there are still four in front of us. One, two, three, four. I'm gonna hide some. Don't look, don't look. And then you will cover one or two or three or four and then ask your child to look again and see if they can tell you how many are hiding under your hand. And then when they make their guess, oh, show them. Did they get it right? All right, let's put all four ladybugs back together again. All right. Have your child cover their eyes or look away and pick some to hide. Keep your hand over them. Have your child look again and guess how many ladybugs are hiding under your hand. Can you guess? Oh, it was two. And then continue with that. Now, this can be a difficult concept to uh, sort of glom onto at first. So if it is really kind of a struggle, Start with three or start with two. And conversely, if your child is just zipping through this, no problem, start with more than four, start with five or six or 10. <laughs> Whatever is the right place for your child at this time. All right, let's work on a little bit of letter identification. You'll see we've got our little ant farm here and we could talk about ants and what they do, how they live underground, they dig in the sand, they crawl around, that they're very, very strong. Um, just talk about that. As I said, you always wanna take as many opportunities as possible for conversation. And now we are going to work on this 
maybe use a little bit of what a little one of our ladybugs or maybe a bee uh, or if you have a toy ant or even a piece of the straw something that you can have your child move along in the search for the letter I'm gonna use the little one here so it doesn't cover as much of the letter so the first way to do this is to just ask your child to find the letter so find the letter a and then oh the bug's gonna have to go walking do, 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 do. there he found the letter a now get another bug can you find the letter s, s, s. the letter s makes the sound s. can you find the s and then the ladybug will have to trace the track there she is and you can keep going with this until you have most of them covered. Every letter of the alphabet is on here in the English alphabet, and you have 20 of these, so you can almost make it. Uh, the next phase to do this would be to write a letter and have your child find the matching one, or to write the lowercase and have them find the uppercase version. So maybe we want them to find, what's this letter? It's a D, 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 D. D is a circle with a long stick. D, D, like dog, dig, dinosaur. Can you find the other letter D in the ant farm? And then take that little bug and go on the search. Let's see what we can do with these nice green popsicle sticks. They are the wide ones, so makes them easier to work with. With these, you could go ahead and make the letter shapes, just like we were doing with the recognition exercise on the ant farm. So make a letter. I've drawn a long line and a shorter line. This is the letter T. T, T makes the sound T, 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 like truck or take or top. Those all start with the sound T, T, T. Now you can also make the matching uppercase letter. And obviously this is going to be easier with letters that don't have curves, but you could do it either way. It will just not quite look the same. There we go. We have a big T, an uppercase T, and we have a little T, a lowercase T. They're both very tall. Tall starts with T, T, T. Now you don't just have to do letters, you can also do shapes like we did a couple of months ago. Uh, use those to make your shapes and then count the number of sides and name the shape. This is a square. A square has one, two, three, four sides. The four sides are all the same length. We can also make a triangle triangle starts with T. A triangle has how many sides? One, two, three. For the next activity, we can work on some balancing. Have your little one hold a stick straight out and see if they can get a butterfly to sit right on that stick. It's very difficult to get him to stay. He wants to fall off, but if you try very hard, you might get it. And then if they can balance it, see if they can take a step while balancing it. Or see if they can get more than one on the stick. And then if you want to let them have a little bit of fun, you can use the stick as a catapult and let that butterfly go flying. Whee! Now you may have noticed that these little ladybugs and bumblebees have little sticky parts on the back. If you remove the paper backing, you will find that they will stick to the sticks. So what you can do is put the ladybugs and the bees or a mixture of them onto these sticks, making sure to use different quantities. So this stick, let's put one ladybug on it. And on this stick, let's put two bumblebees. Now, we talked about how teeny tiny these are, so it is quite difficult to get your little fingers in there and peel off the backing. So this might have to be something that you help. If mom or dad peels off the backing and hands it to the little one, then they will be able to stick it down in the place that they want and make sure that they get it on there nice and well by giving them a little pat, pat, pat. 
Once you have your bugs stuck onto the sticks, we're going to be looking at the quantities again. So you can ask your little one to find the stick, or maybe we can call these leaves. They look like little leaves. Find the leaf that has one ladybug. Then they can find that one. What comes next when you're counting? If you're counting, we start with one. One. What comes after one? Two. Can you find the, le the, the leaf with two bugs on it? Hmm. This one. All right, let's put it in order because when we count, we go one, then two, then what comes next? Can you find the one that has the next number? That is three. Here's the one with three, three ladybugs. And so on, so that you can get them ordered from smallest to largest. Here's another fun way to use those sticks with the bugs stuck on them. If you have a small box laying around the house somewhere, I just found this one that uh, we received in the mail. I just made inch long slits into the box just using a pair of scissors and I've written the number on top of those uh, to indicate what we've got here one through ten. Now we can use those same popsicle sticks and find the right number and then put it in. So you're going to lose the visual of seeing the ladybug when I stick it in but this gives us the fine motor practice of sticking that in there as well as the matching of the quantity to the written number. There we go. And you can actually um, do a similar sort of thing by putting letters on here and writing letters on the ends of the popsicle sticks. Uh, you can write the letters of your child's name and just rearrange them to the right order. Or you can do matching of uppercase, lowercase, or if your child even has some sight words, you can write the entire word on here and have them put that in order. So lots of fun with just a box and a pair of scissors and the popsicle sticks that you have. See what kind of games you can make up with these. Now let's go back to our butterflies. You will have 10 butterflies in your kit. There are a variety of colors. So what we can do with these is sort by color. Put all the yellow ones together. Put all of the blue ones together. Put all of the green ones together. Which pile has the most? This one. What color is that pile? Green. Hmm. Can you think of anything else that might be green? What's something that's green? Hmm. Green grass. Green trees. Green grapes. Green Oscar the Grouch. All right, that pile has the most, the biggest number. What pile has the least, the smallest number? It's this one, what color is that pile? Blue. Can you think of something else that is blue? Blue sky. Blue berries. Blue popsicles and so on and now we can do the visual graphing also with these and with that you just want to line them up and that's just another way to see at a glance which one has the most which one has the least whether the numbers are same or different so with these we can count them we can sort them we can also do patterning with these, just like we did with the straw pieces. So we could pattern going in AB again, yellow, green, yellow, green, yellow, green. We can pattern with an AB, AAB, yellow, yellow, green. Oh no, we can't because I don't have enough, hold on. <laughs> green, green, yellow, green, green, yellow. You can use these to delineate syllables in a word. So we can say the word butterfly, butterfly, butterfly. We can say the word spider, spider. That has two sounds, two syllables, and so on. And I'm gonna show you one other thing that you can do with these. Um, and that is, 
get the bug tongs. And the bug tongs you're gonna stick your fingers in just like a pair of scissors, so it's working that skill. You gotta open them up nice and big to try and grab these butterflies. And maybe you can give your child a clue. So pick up the butterfly that is closest to, and then something that you're close to. There we go. Pick up the butterfly that is closest to the container. Hmm, this one. And now we can put them in there. Or you could say pick up two butterflies and put them into the container. One. Two. And we could stack them up. You could try and say, pick up the stack of butterflies. Can you pick up more than one at one time? Oh, I got a lot of butterflies that time. There we go. Fun with butterflies. With our theme of bugs, do make sure that you uh, take a chance to go outside and go on a bug hunt. Look around where you live and see what kind of bugs you can find. Can you find those creepy crawlies? How do they move? What are they doing? What do they look like? What colors are they? Again, take every opportunity just to talk, talk, talk and do that turn-taking practice. Now with this sheet, we have a number of different bugs. So of course, talk about all of these and then go ahead and cut them out so that you have your set. And this is a matching exercise. Instead of uh, matching the item, we're matching the shadow of the item or the shadow of the insect to a picture of the insect. So, and you could start with a lot of these or start with just a few and say, okay, what's this one? That one's a worm. It wriggles and wiggles and wiggles and wriggles. Can you find the shadow of the worm? Do, 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 do. They might guess this one, it's pretty close, but there it is. And you can continue that way or you can put all of the shadows down and then turn your other cards over like a game and have them draw one and see if they could find the match. Or you can do it as a memory game. Whenever you play these memory games, just make sure that you start off with a small manageable number and work your way up. So I don't know whether I looked to see which ones were under there, but it would be a matching game, a shadow of a bee. Does that match? No. So you would have to make sure that you had the pair in there of the insect and the shadow. And we talked about making a note of how the different bugs move around us. And this is a game to just get those wiggles out and do some moving ourselves. So again, you can go ahead and cut these shapes out or the squares out. And then we have a number of different movements associated with different insects. So we've got crawl like a caterpillar, flutter like a butterfly, buzz like a bee, wriggle like a worm, scuttle like a bee, Beetle, hop like a grasshopper, march like an ant, and slide like a snail. So you could put all of these upside down, have your child pick one out, and then they have to do that movement. And keep going, maybe you wanna take turns where you go, your child goes, you go, your child goes. That's a good opportunity for turn taking and uh, practicing those social skills. The other thing you could do is if you are going outside on a nature walk or on a bug hunt, Take these along with you and see which ones you find. Can you find a beetle? Can you find an ant? Oh, can you find a bee? How about a grasshopper? So use these cards as a little visual scavenger hunt too, as well as practicing the fun movements. And how about creating a little sensory bin that you put all those bugs and creepy crawlies and pieces that we've been playing with right into the sensory bin. Now this is just some dried black beans. Uh, it's a nice feel on your hands. You can get the sound as well as the feel. You can get the pouring aspect. Um, and it kind of looks like dirt, so it looks like a good environment for these bugs. Now, um, usually kids love playing with beans and they love scooping them up. Look at that, how much fun it is with these little bug tongs. You can scoop them and pour them, catch the butterfly, put the little bugs in there too, and then you can look at them. Oh, look, we caught a bee. And just have some fun with that. The pouring, the picking up, the scooping, all great fun and all good practice for those fine motor skills. 
So that's all for this month. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you get a chance to go outside and see if you can find some real-life creepy crawlies. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.